Let's get things started. Ready? Go! What's up, guys? It's the Esmeralda Wednesday back for the video. Um, happy New Year, best wishes. Hope everybody is healthy, sane, and just ready to start off 2022 on a positive foot. Um, today's video is going to be discussing, as the title says, what is Raccoon City? I know if you've been watching my videos or you, you've been following my profile, you know I'm the one who essentially coined the term Raccoon City, you know, leaving a Raccoon City. I've always posted that in comment sections, leaving a Raccoon City, leave them in Raccoon City, right? And people have been asking me, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? Right? Nani? So I'm going to be doing a series I have I haven't, I haven't figured out the name I'm gonna give this series yet. Cause it's gonna be a series where essentially I explain the terms and parallels I'm making between the Resident Evil franchise by Capcom and Modern Day Society. So let's start off, shall we? When I say we live in Raccoon City, or when I say this is Raccoon City, right? What I'm meaning is that when we, first of all, let's look at what Raccoon City is. Raccoon City is the fictional town in the Resident Evil franchise by Capcom. I think that came out in the, in the late to mid nineties. Whose main protagonist was main protagonist was Leon Kennedy, right? And the thing about Raccoon City was that Raccoon City was the ground zero of the viral outbreak in the game known as a T-Virus. Now, if you know Resident Evil, Resident in the game, there's like several different variations of the virus. And even the virus itself is a is actually a naturally occurring um, like substance, but you know, through the models of science and big pharma has become, you know, a bioterrorist weapon, right? But that's what Raccoon is referring to. So when I say we live in Raccoon City, or when I bring Raccoon City up, I'm saying that when I refer to a place as Raccoon City, for example, I'm meaning that in the same way that in the game, Raccoon City was the ground zero for the viral outbreak, for the T-virus explosion, for the liquors, for Mr. X, for all these umbrella agents and things of that sort. That's what I'm referring to in the modern context that there is that we're in a place or a society where the G virus, as I call it, is is being spread. So uh, an example of this would be Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia is a raccoon city. Chicago is a raccoon city. New York is a raccoon city. All California is a raccoon city. The Western world is a raccoon city, right? Because the because in reference to raccoon city, this is the ground zero for a potentially dangerous contagion. Now, in the context of the real world, it wouldn't be an actual virus. It's what is what sociologists call a social contagion. A social contagion is a, is essentially what it sounds like. It's a pervasive thought or ideology that 
has, has widespread in a very quick amount of time, and that's easily spread, largely through peer pressure or just social coercion, right? So to further explain in detail, right, is that with, with Raccoon City, and when I say it, we live in a Raccoon City, it, it harps on the point that the social engineering over the last 60 years has created a lot of men who are okay with the system that the way it is. A lot, a lot of sleeper agents, as some would say, right? But in the context of Raccoon City, it means that these these guys have been bitten. So let's think about, you know, zombie apocalypse movies or like The Walking Dead, right? How you always have that character in the show who gets bit right but hides it because they don't want to be outcasted right so they so, so they hang around the group the main group hiding their bite mark saying they're fine i'm okay i'm fine i'm fine oh i'm good right you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they would never understand until something happens where it can no longer be hidden that oh shit he's bit or oh shit she's bit she has the virus Right? She has the G virus, she has the T virus, she has the zombie virus, right? And when I say we live in a miraculous city, I mean that for those of us who don't have the G virus, for those of us who are aware of the current social, political context of what's going on in the Western world, I can see! I can see! We can't afford to risk ourselves trying to save other people in Raccoon City. Even if these people are family and friends. So when, when you become aware of how fucked up the social context is and how the governments and how all these institutions are literally engineering so, social catastrophes, right? There's going to be people who fight to maintain these systems that you know are detrimental. And these people will pretend as if they're not part of the problem. Some of them may not even know they're part of the problem, i.e., I. right? They have the bite mark and don't, they don't know it yet. It's only a matter of time before they turn, right? It's the same. It's the same parallel in context. In the same way, you could be talking to a guy and think he's your homeboy until you bring up, for example, how women sexually abuse boys, and then you'll say the women who sexually abuse children should go to jail for the rest of their lives or get, you know, the execution. These and you and you and you, and you say that with, with with vindication and no and no fear, right? You'll see guys who will hear that and say, oh, well, you know, she's just a woman. You know, something happened to her. He, he has a G virus. That's part of the systemic indoctrination that says that, oh, well, the actions of a woman aren't as heavy because she's a woman. So therefore, so therefore, these women have an excuse to do horrible things because they're women. And they're men who will defend that, who will defend that freedom to do horrible things, right? He has G virus. Same thing for women. And, and to be clear, most Western women have the G virus in some capacity, but by proxy of feminism and the 1972 Title IX Act. Most women, most women born past 1972 have the G virus. Now, most American Black women have that G virus going all the way back to slavery. That's what that's what you would that's what I would call the regenerator virus. So. The, progen the progenerator virus is also another parallel to the Resident Evil franchise, which is that in the game, the T virus, all these other viruses that came about were actually synthesized from a plant that was found ironically in Africa. I think it's called the stairway to heaven is the colloquial term for it. But that's where what you would call the progenerator virus comes from. The, the purest form of the virus comes from that, comes from that plant. And so the, the chaotic nature that we're seeing now with, you know, families, government, all this stuff can be traced back and diagnosed in how the ADOS community 
was created and honestly functioned isolated in America up until the 1960s. But nevertheless, when I, when I say leave them in Rational City, I'm saying that you as a functioning person who understands and sees the context of how the media, the government, and just every other institution is rearranging things and organizing things to put men at a disadvantage, but also to maintain a inherently rigged and unfair system. You have to make the judgment call that there are going to be people you love that you have to leave in Raccoon City, that you have to distance yourself from, that you have to let them die on their own. Like, you know, if she dies, she dies. If he dies, he dies. Ivan Drago. If he dies, he dies. You have to let them die on their own. Right? And you as a person who understands what's going on, you can't try and go back into Raccoon City and try to save people. You know, because we always see the trope in, in zombie movies. Oh, I can save somebody. Oh, that there's someone still alive in the burning building. No, because let's say you go back there and save that person. And because of their mentality and their social conditioning, they do things that now put you in danger. Right? Prime example. Um, I think it was Pink Book Lessons did a video series on these, girl call, these um, girls called the Famous Twins in Mississippi. Full-on G-Virus candidates. I mean, these girls are like, you know, Mr. X-level G-Virus candidates, right? Because of their G-Virus-induced mindset, they got their adopted step to father killed and some other random guy killed. All right? So that's what I mean when I say live in Raccoon City. That's what I mean when I say this is a Raccoon City or she has Raccoon or she's part of Raccoon City. Right? Is that Raccoon City is a ground zero for the modern social contagion that we're seeing that I call the G-Virus. For the unfair laws we're seeing that I call the G-Virus. For the misandrous mindset we're seeing that I call the G-Virus. For the mentalities that we're seeing across the internet between men and women boys and girls across gender and race, right? Even sexuality. is That's what I call Raccoon City. It's ground zero. It's the zombie apocalypse. And if you don't watch out, you will get turned. There are those who will turn you. There are those who don't even know they have the bite yet, who are waiting for the perfect opportunity to where they will turn and then bite you. But nevertheless, um, thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and peace.